Diego is a VP and principal analyst at uh, Forrester Research. He's got a lot of experience in this area. He's he's passionate about about quality and automation and AI and software development. So, uh, Diego, take it away. Thank you very much, Arthur, for the introduction. And um, I'm really glad to be at this uh, event. Uh, thank you guys for inviting me as a guest speaker. But uh, I'm excited too to hear about the lineup of great speakers that are actually the ones that are doing the stuff that we talk about, uh, uh, you know, every every day. Um, so, what am I going to be talking about? Let me. Uh, see if I can. Okay, great. So basically, uh, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Just wanted to, to 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 show up for a few minutes, and I'll go back uh, to getting my video, uh, stopping my webcam, because that way I was told the quality of the slides are better. So, so what am I going to be talking about? Well, there's three things I want to share with you today. I'm going to ask, answer basically three uh, three main questions, right? One is, is it really all just about speed, right? Or is it about speed with quality? And I'm actually going to try and prove why it is about speed with quality and not just about speed. The next question I'm going to try and answer is, well, what's happening in the industry with testing, right? A little bit of trends. That's what we do for a living in Forrester. How should you adapt testing to the needs of development? So basically, how, you know, as we talk about those trends, as I talk about those trends in point two, the question is, how do you do it, right? I will be talking about, you know, maybe continuous testing. So how does that, how do you get that to work? And of course, this is all research that I do working with clients such as the ones that are on the call today with many others that we have in Forrester, but also talking to the vendors and understanding where the trends are coming from from a research perspective. So <coughs> why is it not about speed? Well, I guess starting you know, a, spe a talk today without uh, referring to what's going on uh, with the pandemic is, is a bit hard. And I don't, I'm not gonna be talking much about this, but I just wanted to share that, you know, there is, uh, you know, right, right now, there is a big impact in the, in, the, in the market. Big, well, not as big as we might all feel sometimes, because you can see that our data shows that 24% of the organizations uh, are in this, uh, what we call in Forrester survival mode. And that means they have significant revenue contractions and you know and and could be up to the 20 or more percent of revenue contraction think about you know airlines think about the leisure industry hotels and so forth those are definitely you know struggling these days 60% are in this what we call adaptive mode which means there are portions of the business that are kind of being severely disrupted perhaps and others that are just minor disruptions or even uptakes in some other business areas. And so they're adapting to this kind of status and context that we're, we're living in. And then you've got 13% that are in this growth mode and, you know, they're pretty much under stress. Uh, the current, uh, you know, think about those companies in the online business or, or the healthcare business where there's just uh, new business opportunities and revenue growth. And, and so they have to, and because their products and services are right at the, you know, in the eye of the hurricane here. And so they're really, uh, you know, growing and growing fast. And I guess, you know, while all that, so depending where you are, maybe the levels of, uh, of, uh, of investments in digital are changing, but, but um, you know, we, what we hear uh, over and over is that um, everybody, you know, there's lots of digital transformation going on despite the pandemic and it is actually true <laughs> this is just you know you know Satya Nadella talking to the to, to, to thousands of developers at the at their at their developer uh, build conference and he's right you know we all talk about this and say this that uh, customers are some customers are doing what they haven't been doing for years and they're doing it in two months now maybe they're not doing it necessarily the right way or the best way but they're moving on, right, to, to, to introducing more and more digital than they've done in the past. And really, at the end of the day, it's all about fast and continuous change, right? Nobody predicted the pandemic and, and, and you know, and, and nobody pr predicts what's around the corner going forward, despite, you know, uh, pandemic potential issues. But 
there's changes happening uh, at the business at uh, at uh, at, a, at a very fast uh, pace and and so the question is really that we need to adapt to new business con conditions continuously and that's what i call that we what we call in forester adaptive delivery right and so adaptive delivery is you know you might think about this as agile or, or agility from end end agility business end to end agility business and uh, of course we've been doing things to adapt our deliveries and the question is have we really become i mean is the need of this adaptive of this adaptive delivery uh, the need to be faster um, is that something that we really need to be doing or is the need for us to be more adaptive to to the different speeds that business might need? And the reason why I ask that question is because what we've seen in Forrester since 2014 and 2019 data is not any different. Um, what we've seen is that basically one release a month keeps being around 24 percent of the organization's that are, you know, this is kind of changed going from 22 to 24, 24 to 23. It's like being around that percentage. In other words, you know, that percent of companies are releasing, are releasing monthly and it's not growing. It's not growing. It's plateaued, right? It looks like speed has plateaued. And so the question is, Ray, and, and that's, you know, so, so that's why it bears the question. So is it maybe being faster? Is that the right question or is the right question maybe, to be more adaptive and what is it that is eventually holding up so on one side it could be that maybe we don't you know companies don't need some companies don't need to deliver software just at fast speed every 10 seconds right maybe the business doesn't need that in all areas of the organization but the other question is 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 it perhaps that quality is holding up us for even if we wanted to deliver at higher speed is that being held up by poor quality and the reason I ask that question, very important question, is because guess what, right? Sometimes we feel, you know, the guys on the ground, uh, I talk to testers and developers, it's like, well, nobody, you know, we don't get the investments we need for quality because we, you know, it sounds like it, it's kind of a given, right? That we have to do what we do right. And there's no special need for investing in, 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 making, in, in, in making products that are of higher quality. And I'd say, well, actually, you know what? That's not really the that's not really the same sentiment I have, which is I see quality all over the place, and I see uh, at the executive level that there is a lot of focus on quality because if you read the ten sec filings of these huge companies, right, you read here in between the lines what they're saying is that if what we deliver and what we don't we build is not of high quality. Well then, you know, we're gonna our business is gonna be uh, affected. Um, it's gonna be badly affected. So, so you know, quality for sure is in the minds of executive at our own organizations. But it's also in the mind of the guys on the ground, right? Those that are the app dev teams. And and this is data from a, a, a developer survey that in Forrester we filled to over three thousand developers. And we asked the question to those guys, well, what are the, you know, what are the metrics? We looked at the metrics that they use and you can see that there's this category, there's these, these four buckets of metrics, an increasing number are trying to focus on business value, progress, efficiency, of course, mean time to things like mean time to repair progress in terms of, you know, are we improving, uh, are we improving any of the practices that we're doing? But the top two metrics that they're using is, are around quality. They're around, you know, greater number of defects, fixed effect density, or, or let's say quality in production, 33%, and quality in pre-production, improved mean time to repair uh, metrics, number of defects in, and, you know, number of defects in production. Sorry, I, I actually swapped the two. The first one is pre-production quality. Second point is, is, is quality in production. But but it's interesting. It's the top two metrics. Everything else comes afterwards. So, so teams are focused around quality. Executives are focused around quality. So let me say it really is about quality at speed and not just speed. All right. So let's take a look now at where is the industry overall in terms of going a level down about how we are testing in the industry. So this is data coming from a different uh, 
uh, from a different uh, um, research. It's coming from uh, a survey, a panel survey that I run across about a, depending on the year. This year it was 2019 was 149 uh, and 2015, 2017. Uh, we had um, higher numbers, but basically it's a qualified panel of those teams that are doing Agile. So you're supposed to think that these teams are actually, you know, using strong practices. They, if you're doing Agile, you have to be automating more because if you've got manual testing in the way, there's no way you can deliver with speed and you can deliver, you know, on a, on a bi-weekly or weekly or even daily sometimes basis. And so um, I do ask around automation and what you can see is those folks that are supposed to be you know advanced if you want the advanced bucket of uh, of uh, of developers well you look can see that the, you 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 know we get to the same story of the devops uh, numbers that i was showing the release cadence it's you know automation seems to have plateaued a little bit well it's not a little bit it's flat right from 2015 to 2019 that's over 6 years right 4 years 2015 17 19 you can see that that more or less the different types of automation that are done are are pretty much flat there's not a lot of growth it's around the 40 percent which is not too bad but if you look at the other data point which is up higher here which talks about you know looks at the manual uh, 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 manual testing done same same survey uh, you can see that the data around automation is right because you can see that also the data around testing uh, manually test manual testing is not changing much it's flat it's pretty much flat 49% 2015 it decreased in 2017 but it didn't decrease much in 2019 46% again so manual automation is flat manual testing is flat in the sense that manual manual testing is not decreasing and automation is not increasing much but you don't get the same story, and this is very interesting, you don't get the same story from, this is another qualified group of customers that I interview when I do my wave. And the wave that I'm talking about is this continuous functional test automation suite, te uh, suites wave, uh, uh, of, which, uh, of, of which also Parasoft, by the way, was part of this. So I had 52 customers from those vendors that I surveyed. And these are, you know, we're talking about the top 15 in my opinion, of course, my assessments, the top 15 uh, product leading product vendors, testing vendors in the market. And so I ask, you know, for, for highly qualified customers, Fortune 2000 strong customers that they can give me so that I can survey them. And you can see what happened is that 25% of those customers would tell me that they are highly automated, over 80% of their tests automated. And the interesting point is that between the 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 two the the wave that I did the previous year same wave, right? Was this number was twelve percent? So it increased more than the what we saw in the previous slide. But also you can see that forty eight percent are between fifty and eighty percent. So that's again a nice high you know a nice and high number as well. So between you know over seventy percent basically can are automating more than fifty percent of their of their um, of their tests, which is which is pretty good. So, I guess you know I I don't I don't put I never put te technology first, right? I think every all the changes we're talking about is about people, process, and technology. I always put technology third. But if we're talking about automation, of course we can't avoid talking about um, technology. And so, what this also shows that selecting the right testing suite matters right having the right testing automation technology makes a difference and we're going to see that when you know you see also the rest of the speakers after after me what they're doing with um, uh, you know with with uh, with technology another interesting point about the state of the market is you know well developers how much are they testing everybody talks about developer testers and and guess what? This is a survey, right? It's different from the Agile one that I just showed you. This goes back to the original uh, data, you know, uh, surveys that I was showing um, a few minutes back. And you can see that, again, 3,000 developers, global developers worldwide in 2018, 2019 asked the same question. How much time do you spend in a typical workday doing the following activities from one to four? These are answers for one to four hours. You can see, again, you know, pretty 
flat in terms of no not much growth on the automation but i guess this would be this would actually be really good numbers if these are really good percentages and numbers if they were spending four hours a day but unfortunately when you open up the data you'll see that all these are closer to the one hour so basically one it's a little you know it's flat it hasn't changed much uh, much and um, they're not spending more than an hour a day on testing and we know that that won't be if that's the percentage you know compared to what a project takes in terms of development time versus testing time or an you know analysis and design and and deploy times you know testing can't be just 10 percent of all that so and actually the data gets even worse uh, you know that's even a positive representation of the data because the same data if you when we i segmented it distinguishing between managers and non-managers and um and sorry i believe more to the non-managers you can see that the non the you know the lighter green the numbers the percentages go even down right so there's less there's less of the developers that are spending even one hour a day so anyway long story short what i'm seeing and saying is that developers are neutral to or eventually hate testing and when they love testing or they think they like testing, they might be looking for positive paths. So my point is that we're always going to need, need strong specialized testing skills in any development team that wants to achieve high level of quality. Another interesting area is about uh, APIs. And that does, this is data from my wave, going back to the wave, I, you know, asking those 59 customer references about different things, how much are you significantly using the tool, you know, for test automation, for omni-channel testing, for, for you know, automation of functional tests within a CI/CD tool chain. API testing is starting to, you know, to 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 kind of show up with 24%. Uh, it's still early days, but but it's maturing. It's maturing quite a bit. And um, and then another question I asked again in that wave to those 59 qualified customers. So, you know, of, of these products, of the product that you're using, how much is it really helping you with your Agile and DevOps journey, right? Is that testing tool a great partner in the pipeline, right? Is it working effectively in that DevOps, Agile, DevOps context? And you can see that 49 of the respondents said, yes, we do, we do use it into, in an Agile DevOps context. And uh, 10 of them said, well, actually, we're not. We're using it in Waterfall. And the 49 are pretty happy with it, giving it a high score. And then um, another interesting data point is uh, is is basically, um, and this is the almost the last one. I just have another slide, is uh, again, what's happening in the market is there's this, this, this trend toward a testing suite or platform over best of breed 72 percent responded to the question of do you prefer best of breed or unif or integrated and 72 percent said we prefer integrated testing functionality therefore that means you know having different testing personas in the same environment being able to collaborate nicely and smoothly or eventually having a tester that is more of a technical tester that can also do maybe some api or some some more technical testing but the tool enables that with a smooth you know with a smooth uh, transition so basically that's a quick snapshot on where i see you know where industry where where, where testing is in the industry so the question is then how can we adapt testing to what the new needs of development are and the answer is i already anticipated this well it's all about continuous testing that's the way we need to modernize testing if you want to deliver continuously you have to test continuously no discussion and that means what does that mean well it means having testing starting very very early on right ideation and planning it means designing and building te and testing happening during design and build and having a, a test engineer right provide input into the design from a quality perspective it means having testing during uh, integration time because we're doing lots of of course integration testing maybe using even service virtualization to automate that it means also uh, deploying an automate release checking all the testing that needs to be done at the release time deploying and then gathering feedback from production that can be leveraged again back into the you know into the backlog and and go through the cycle of development so i wrote a piece of research that is called the 12 must do's of continuous testing and I, maybe it's it's more than 12 but uh, 
but there's lots of practices that I summarized under these, you know, kind of uh, uh, titles. And and the important thing, I'm not going to talk about all 12. We don't have the time. Um, but there's a few takeaways or important takeaways. One is that, as I said at the beginning, this is not just a technology change. It is a practice dash process organization role and technology transformation right and you need to introduce new practices you know from shifting testing to the left starting very early on using test driven development perhaps or behavior driven development it's shifting testing to the right sounds like you know almost uh, uh, a um, a contradiction with the shifting testing to the left but it's not because what we mean by that is that we want to leverage we, we might have to test we're starting also to do more, especially with API testing and microservice testing, more testing in production, but also leveraging data, monitoring data, and bringing that data back or, 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 say, or, or and using synthetic test uh, data that we're creating during the early test phases that can be leveraged for monitoring as well. So it is really shifting both left and right to some extent. And we're replacing manual testing with ad hoc testing, exploratory testing, and not the usual manual testing that we're doing, then testing teams are federating. Testers are getting embedded into teams. So federating doesn't mean that you don't have a test center anymore. You have a smaller test center, which is shared, of course, but it's a few people that are kind of helping with the governance of testing, helping with you know, tools to use, helping with formalizing some of the great practices that are we're learning around in the team so that making sure that those go back into the teams. And so there's a, a continuous loop between you know, the, the periphery, the field, the, 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 the teams, and, and some of the great practices that we're trying to kind of consolidate on and maybe standard, standardize uh, on a bit. And then, of course, metrics and dealing with metrics in the same way. And there is no standard metric between organizations or teams, but eventually there can be, you know, a method for defining the metrics and the good and the type of metrics that we want to focus on maybe uh, that can be, you know, defined and shared between the teams. And then you have this focus on, on automation from a technology perspective. API testing is becoming increasingly important. One, because where as we move to the cloud, as we introduce microservices and redefine and redesign applications in a new way and not in a siloed way, uh, there's the API economy coming or already out there, you know, open banking. I mean, there's so many, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a huge ecosystem around API. So increasing your API testing is going to become important to manage, you know, it's not going to be enough to manage the complexity to test at the UI level. You're going to have to go beyond the UI and do API, te API testing and automating that. Of course, integrating into a CI CD and doing version control to be able to manage the automation itself and so that you version control all the assets along one version and you can bring it back into you know development or, or deploy it and move it forward into the pipeline in an easier way. Um, and then there's this, you know, these 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 areas of of service virtualization. Uh, you're going to hear more about service virtualization. You're going to hear more about API testing because there's a couple of great uh, sessions after me. I know after my presentation, so you can definitely look into how those uh, technologies, those approaches are being used. But service virtualization is is really important when you have a very complex land, especially if you have a complex landscape and you need to simulate some of that landscape so that you can keep doing the testing even if maybe another team because remember if you're doing agile you've got multiple teams working it's very hard to synchronize them not they're all not going to be delivering on the same time they're all not going to have you know the plans match up with the components that one team might wait and use need to use from another team so service rotation really helps decoupling that decoupling and test in that decoupled world but it also helps for for automating integration testing and there's more to that you're going to hear more about that test data management uh you know this is a topic that i'm i'm hearing more and more about and it's nothing new of course right uh, you might think well why are we talking about test data management as being a must do it should be there i mean even without agile and devops we need to test data but now there's a different way of dealing with that test data right you might be have you might have to use more synthetic data you might have to cycle around that data more frequently to update the data refresh it for the teams and so there's a whole practice tools technologies around that as well and then last but not least test you know test environment provision actually i think the next 
presentation after mine is exactly going to be talking about that. And there's, of course, a whole management strategy around that. But also to do this quickly, it's quite often providing self-service, self-service test environments to the teams. And and I, you know, I, I realize I'm brushing very quickly and fast through these uh, these different uh, technology areas. The last thing I want to say is we are going to see more and more use of AI and machine learning getting infused into these technologies. And you know, whether we like it or not, or where, whether we're skeptical on on how much of this is happening, yes, we are starting to see this. You're, you're, you know, you're. You'll see you'll you'll see some application of this already in the tools Parasoft has, for example, you know a cool way of of abstracting uh, API testing and generating API API calls and tests for for a developer that doesn't necessarily or a tester that is not necessarily you know um, uh, making it easier. Let me say for for creating and generating tests with using AI and machine learning, but we're seeing AI and machine learning infused in many of these technologies to help us manage the overall test strategy what to test next what uh, uh, maybe what automation is more convenient to test because with models we can use and leverage a lot of the data that these tools generate and past history data to find you know to predict what we need to do and what we what we might better be doing in the future so this is going to be a growing area and I, it's highlighted in red because I think this is, you know, we're going to see more and more of this happening. And actually, as I talk about this, this is a nice lead way into, into my last slide, um, which is so, you know, what, because this is getting us a bit into the future. And, and besides becoming better, you know, at uh, continuous testing uh, and learning more of the practices, shifting testing to the all the all the twelve must dos that I talked about. That's something we're going to, you know, we're, I'm seeing organizations moving on with. But there's more. There's more around the corner. And what is it? It's what's happening is, you know, there's this wealth of automation that is going to hit us. It's going to. It's it's it sounds. It feels like it's going to be a tsunami because. Each one of these areas, which provide and you know address a different use case, like uh, robotic process automation to automate maybe a task and uh, maybe automate you know some simple tasks. That's what's happening today, but it's being used from from for business people. And RPA tools are used from the business, and um, you know and there's uh, and, and and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of growth planned to come uh, this year and next year around. RPA and the uh, and and process automation. There's dynamic case management, which is a form of of process automation again, but using and leveraging you know systems like you know printing systems or emailing and and integrating that again into a an overall automated process, overall digital process automation, which kind of integrates. It's kind of the automation of the automation because it integrates all these different automated components and and processes that we are at the operational level deploying. And businesses deploying, and uh, and then there's these two other very important areas. One is there's this trend, and I'm you know probably not saying anything new to you. This this there's this low code right uh, trend of of citizen developers, and again on the business side using more of these low code or no code tools uh, that are highly graphical, easy to use, and 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 again business are building you know apps with 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 these low code platforms and 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 then last but not least there is this other trend which i talked about i talked about ai being used in testing but think about all the ai applications that are being deployed and delivered and i'm sure many of you guys that are listening and and uh, and that are going to be on this on this panel are already doing this right whether it's whether it's for cybersecurity, where whether it's for product recommendations, whether it's for, you know, or or chatbots infused with AI, but basically where we're making applications become, you know, a bit smarter by being able to speak or listen or see, uh, and and or write, and and that's happening again. And so my question, or more of my point, is that all this automation needs to be tested, right? So again, I talked about AI in testing. That's one thing. This is about testing AI, testing low-code apps, testing RPA applications, testing the automation. And I think that's going to be something that is going to 
you know, maybe as testers, we have to be happy because we know we've got a bright future in front of ourselves. Lots of this is still, you know, you're moderate, you know, we're, we're moderately seeing this, but I think we're going to see this become more of a huric hurricane as we use these technologies to build more at scale enterprise type applications, which is not what, what I think we're mostly doing today. We're doing very simple things. And so you can get away maybe with not thinking about testing and some, some of them are, but as you start deploying thousands of new processes in production and business does that, and then what they also do, they go into production and, and change in production without testing. I mean, they do this, really do this. And they can get away with that because as I said, not simple at scale, you know, mission critical apps, but if we're starting to do more and more of that, you can think of the nightmare, right? And so we need to get that testing, and we need to get all that under control with testing and quality. And I think that's that's something that we're gonna see happening over the next three to five years at least, starting soon today. And with that, um, I think I've finished my 30 minutes for the presentation. And um, Artur, I think, uh, I don't know if we have any questions that uh, you uh, want me to answer. So uh, we had a couple of questions, Diego, but uh, we are running a little over. So we're gonna just jump right into the next one and we can handle those questions offline. Thanks, Diego, it was great. Lots of interesting information. All right, thanks. Thank you very much.